Let's talk about Princess Mononoke, when director Hayao Miyazaki just had it with people. Mononoke, what's it mean? Nowadays, there's a Japanese word that means supernatural creatures, or phenomena. Uh, phenomena. They're called yokai. It's an old word, but it only became all the rage recently in the Meiji period. Before that, supernatural creatures were called all kinds of different names, like yure or bakemono. But even before that, in ancient times, they used this old word mononoke. It didn't mean something so clear, like supernatural creatures. Mononoke were mysterious forces. You can't see them, you can't touch them. They were that spooky presence that seemed to hang around in scary places, like forests, mountains, and your hallway. Mononoke had a negative vibe, something you should fear. Back then, the natural world outside your home or village was scary, especially places far from civilization like forests, oceans, and mountains. Imagine walking alone at night in the woods. Who knows what kind of creatures or spirits lurked around you. I get scared just taking the trash out at night. Mononoke was the name people gave to these scary things out in the world that could attack them at any time. They eventually updated the word's meaning to become more like spirits that could possess you and cause you to get sick or die. But the older meaning probably applies best to the movie. The movie is about a conflict between two really different groups. On one side, you have terrifying monsters that will kill you without hesitation. And on the other side, you have the animals of the forest. The humans fight against what they think are dark, mysterious forces. People in the movie are scared of the woods. When Ashitaka emerges from the forest carrying the wounded, the villagers at first are like, Oh crap, are they Mononoke? This is why they call San Princess Mononoke, because she's on the side of the forest. It could also be them insulting her, like, Hey look at this brat, a human fighting against her own side. I bet she's a vegan. When are we? When the movie starts, we're dropped into a fight between a boy and a demon boar, which is how every movie should start. You may think it's some wonderful fantasy land. It's actually Japan, right at the start of the Sengoku period, a time when famous samurai went around fighting for land and glory. So yes, it is a wonderful weeb fantasy land. Ashitaka is one of the last emishi, an ethnic group whose ancestors were the first peoples in Japan. Real quick, if you haven't seen my videos on it, the first people in Japan were the Jomon, who called the Japanese archipelago home for thousands and thousands of years. Then the Yayoi came over to couch surf for a bit, but they were terrible guests and eventually took over the place. One Yayoi kingdom, called the Yamato, beat all the other Yayoi. Their state would later become the Japan that we know. They called anyone outside of their control Emishi. The Yamato state eventually wiped out the Emishi, while some Emishi moved north to Hokkaido and merged with some other peoples and became the Ainu. The Ainu still exist today, but that's enough about them, at least that's what the Japanese government said. Knowing what happened to the Emishi, and knowing that Ashitaka comes from the last Emishi village, it helps us recognize the plight of the forest. The Japanese eliminated the Emishi, and they would do the same to the animals and spirits of the forest as well. The boar. When Nago, the boar spirit, attacks Ashitaka's village, the old man in the watchtower calls him a Tatarigami, tatarigami, no. tatarigami. which means curse spirit or curse god. A Tatarigami is a powerful spirit that seeks revenge on those who wronged it, and it's not fond of quaint countryside villages. One famous Tatarigami is Yamata no Orochi, a giant snake with eight heads and eight tails. He's real terrifying, but probably has issues moving in a straight line. Nago's hatred for humans makes him a demon, and like any good anime, this demon sprouts tentacles. True to the name Curse Spirit, the tentacles touch Ashitaka and curse him to die, but it does give him super strength, so he can pursue his favorite hobby of removing samurai heads with arrows. Nago and all the other animal spirits and the Kodama are examples of Kami, which is usually translated as spirit, god, or phenomenon. In the Shinto religion, the Japanese believe that the world is full of Kami. This was explained in one sentence by a famous philosopher. Every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. Okay, not totally true, but true enough. 
Basically, anything significant is a kami. A weird looking tree, that's significant, probably a kami. Your student debt, that's significant, probably a kami. So the humans destroying the forest would not only destroy the normal animal and plant life, it would destroy the kami who live there as well. Ashitaka. Ashitaka's story borrows a lot of imagery from old stories about Yamato Takeru, a legendary prince from Japan's foundation myths. In fact, a lot of the animals in the movie are in these legends. In one story, Yamato Takeru killed a god of the mountain in the Ashigara Pass, who was in the shape of a deer. In another, a god in the shape of a boar challenged him to a fight, but he didn't accept. In another, he was lost in the mountains and a white dog guided him out. This white dog could have been a wolf because the Japanese use the word dog to refer to wolves all the time. In another story, the prince was exhausted and refreshed himself by drinking from a spring. So, did I mention that Ashitaka is an emishi? This is important. He's not Japanese. He is an outsider to everyone in the main story. That's why his clothing, his village, and his beliefs are so different. He even uses a sword that looks like a warabi teto, which really gives me a wop because it's a real sword type that came from the emishi. Ashitaka cuts off his top knot before leaving the village. Look, top knots were a big deal, okay? A status symbol. For example, it used to be a symbol of the samurai, and a samurai would cut off his top knots if he ever chose to leave everything behind to, say, become a monk. Ashitaka cutting off his top knot means a similar thing. He leaves behind his status as the future leader of the village. Ashitaka refuses to tell people where he's from because he doesn't want the Japanese to come absorb his village too, the last Emishi village. Being Emishi, Ashitaka is not on the side of Iron Town or the Emperor or the Samurai, but he's also not on the side of the forest spirits either. They're Japanese gods, not Emishi gods. He doesn't worship them. This makes Ashitaka a neutral outside observer. San and the Wolves We first see San and the Wolves when they attack the people of Iron Town. One of the men calls them Inugami, which means dog kami or dog spirit. Inugami do exist in Japanese folklore. They're these supernatural creatures that look like dogs, but they can possess humans like a ghost. Obviously, these wolves can't possess people, but it shows you how scared the townsfolk are of the forest and its mononoke. Also, the word inu means dog, but the Japanese often use the word dog to refer to wolves. San calls herself a yama inu, or mountain dog. Wolves are seen as guardians of mountains and mountain villages. San sees herself as a wolf, so it makes sense for her to protect the forests and the mountains. Ironically, wolves are also supposed to protect crops from boars and deer. Farmers would pray and give offerings to wolf spirits to protect their crops. San was raised by wolves, which gives her massive street cred in the Studio Ghibli reunion. Being raised by wolves is not a new idea. There is a legend that one leader of the famous Fujiwara clan, Fujiwara no Hirehira, was also raised by wolves after he was abandoned in the forest as a baby. To be fair, he was a terrible baby. There's also a belief that giving babies wolf milk would make them grow up strong. Moro, the mama wolf, has two tails. This could be a reference to the Nekomata, a supernatural cat that also has two tails. These cats can grow big and have no problems killing people. They can even throw fireballs. The tails could also be a reference to the kitsune, or the fox. In folklore land, the fox is a magical creature that likes to shapeshift into humans. They also grow a new tail every 100 years, growing wiser and more powerful with each tail. The most powerful kitsune have nine tails. Lady Eboshi Lady Eboshi wears men's clothing. She even has a top knot, which only men are supposed to have. It fits with how she governs Iron Town. The town is egalitarian, where the women work the forge instead of the men. The word aboshi means those black hats you see Japanese men wear in old paintings. They came in all different shapes and sizes. Commoners wore the soft kind, but court nobles and samurai wore the hard kind that often stood up in weird shapes so they could qualify to ride on roller coasters. Lady Eboshi herself doesn't wear an aboshi though. She wears a hat in the shape of a type of straw hat called Toriyoigasa. Though her hat doesn't seem to be made from straw. This type of hat used to be just a good way to shade your face from the sun, but nowadays are worn by female folk dancers. A long time ago, there used to be female entertainers called chirabioshi, who sang and danced wearing men's clothing. 
They even carried a sword. This may point to Lady Aboshi's past. Maybe she used to be a Shirabiyoshi dancer. It would fit the theme since the townswomen are former adult entertainers. Jigobo. One thing about Jigobo, or Jigo in the English version, he wears these sandals that only have one tooth, called Tengu Geta, named after the Tengu, creatures with dangerous and powerful magic that can really ruin your day, but you just can't take them seriously because of their ridiculous noses. They also like to disguise themselves as mountain monks. Remember, Chikobo is also a monk. Those sandals are a little clue that you shouldn't trust the guy. And also his mustache. You can't trust anyone with that mustache. Kodama. The Kodama does exist in Japanese folklore, but they don't look like this. These cute and creepy little spirits with their adorable little butts came out of the amazing mind of director Miyazaki. He said that he was influenced by a manga called Mud Men, made by Moroshi Daijuro. The manga was about the mud men of the Asaro tribe in Papua New Guinea. You can see the Kodama's faces look like the masks in the manga. Those masks also clearly inspired Sun's own mask. The character in the manga also wears face paints similar to Sun. The traditional Kodama are spirits that live in trees. If you cut down a tree that has a Kodama living in it, you would become cursed and may even die. Sometimes blood would gush forth from the cuts you make to such a tree. Sometimes Kodama will appear as floating lights around trees. Spirit of the Forest So the Shishigami looks like a deer with the face of a human, or at least a human that just woke up. It's often translated as Deer God, or Deer God that's a crazy ass head, but this is not accurate. It means more like Beast God, a god of all the beasts in the forest. So Spirit of the Forest is probably a better translation. The Shishigami may have been based on the Kasuga Deer Mandala paintings that became popular in the late Heian period. They just look similar. Deer are seen as messengers of the gods. They're especially associated with the god Takimi Kazuchi, who is worshipped in the Kasuga Shrine. Today, the path to the Kasuga Shrine actually goes through a deer park, where adorable deer roam free for tourists to feed. You don't believe they're messengers of the gods? Well, listen to this. If you bow to them, they will bow back. That settles it. They're truly polite messengers of the gods, or they just want food. The paintings show a tree attached to the deer's back, covered with wisteria vines. Wisteria is a symbol of the Fujiwara clan. Fujiwara means field of wisteria. The Kasuga shrine was built by the Fujiwara and became their main shrine. On top of the tree lies a mirror showing five local Shinto gods, depicted as Buddhist gods, showing that Buddhism and the native Japanese beliefs were intertwined. In the movie, the Shishigami doesn't have a tree attached to his body, but it does have big ol' antlers that look kinda like tree branches. The weird, kinda human-looking face is actually a thing in Japanese folklore. There are a whole bunch of creatures with the body of an animal, but the face of a human like the kudan, a cow with a human face, the hoko, a dog with a human face, or the linfemi, a god with a human face. At night, the spirit of the forest turns into the night walker. In Japanese, it's called the dedarabochi. These are gigantic humanoid creatures. These giants are a lot bigger than the one in the film. They're so big that their footsteps leave behind whole lakes. They can move mountains. It's said that Mount Fuji was created by a Deidarabochi when it scooped up dirt from the surrounding area and put it in a big pile which became Mount Fuji. Alright. This isn't a full analysis of the movie, just a list of interesting folklore references. Let me know if I miss anything interesting. And check out these folktale videos, if you like. We have two new patrons this week, Pika Pool Vince, who is Pika Cool, and KP Wong, who does no wrong. Thanks so much, you guys. Alright, I love you, and spread the knowledge.